Some people argue that the main lead in killing Osama bin Laden came through enhanced interrogation. Do you agree? No, I, I, main lead is the wrong word. Um, I could say the main method. One of the main leads. Yeah, I would say, I mean, I, I will go so far as to say I have always believed, I have been so briefed, I have no reason to disbelieve it at this point, that a very important element of the accumulative uh, information we had that was brought to bear to uh, what I would have hoped would have been the capture of bin Laden was came out of the EITs. I, I don't think anybody who knows uh, the stories could could dispute that. I just don't think it's debatable. Um, and I, I don't think there's a director or anybody who's you know off the reservation ever on this subject. Those of us who were involved with, you know, it's a sobering thing to get up at early in the morning and go brief the President of the United States and say, Mr. President, this is what I think and this is why I think it and this is what we have. And after a while, you take this stuff very darn seriously because <coughs> this guy you're talking to can make a phone call and things will happen. And you want to make darn sure they're the right things. So uh, my view uh, on, on all of this was that the enhanced interrogation techniques uh, were extraordinarily valuable to us. Uh, there's a new book coming out by uh, Michael Hayden. Now, this, well, yeah, there is a new book coming out by Michael Hayden. It came out yesterday. There's always a new book coming out, but <laughs> this one's by um, Jameson. Uh, the, uh, Jamie, uh, who is the psychiatrist? Uh, slips my mind at the moment. That's because I'm not supposed to read no names. One of the people who developed the program has written a wonderful book. It's called Enhanced Techniques. It's coming out in about a month or so. And um, he uh, he really lays this all out, and it, it it's very similar to all the briefings we had. And I thought, okay, here's a technician down in the trenches who was there, was actually in the room, uh, and is telling us these things. And uh, it's it's the same as all of the stuff I have heard right along, and I've not heard anything to discredit. The the Senate report is a cherry picked piece of. Uh, political uh, persuasion that's out there for a reason that is not to get at the accuracy of the situation. It's out there to make a political point, and uh, that's why Washington works. That's fine, but that's that's not what really went on. Uh, I believe that we got Bin Laden uh, through a lot of years of hard work from a lot of people and by putting together <laughs> the various uh, aspects of our operational capabilities in a logical way based on great analysis, uh, putting dots in the right place finally, that were coming in, you know, just avalanches of information. We finally figured it out right, we pursued it, we got better at how we did it, and we, we got it. Now, the, the one thing I regret about that whole lot, well, two things. One is they didn't do the practice takeout, uh, and hindsight is real easy, uh, by building a solid wall instead of using a chain link fence in their mock-up. Because if they'd done that, I think they would have gotten a rotor wash problem figured out in the helicopter and not smashed up the helicopter, which added a, a dimension of excitement, which was not necessary. And I, I say that. That's my view. I'm not a helicopter pilot. Uh, that is a weakness I saw, and maybe I'm alone in that. But the other, uh, the other aspects of it, uh, I think, went, went extremely well until we got to the, the part about taking credit. And we talked way too much. We gave away some valuable things uh, about how we do business and how we got there and uh, what happened. There's a doctor in jail to this day that doesn't need to be in jail in, in Pakistan because people got involved into the victory lap game, and that's not how intelligence works. That's not what we do. So uh, the other huge problem I have, uh, and I will never know the answer to this, maybe someday somebody will, is what were the exact instructions given to the SEALs who were to capture him or kill him? Because in my view, bin Laden was a lot more important to us alive, being interrogated, than being dead on the floor. And I know the argument is, well, that's one less martyr to worry about. No, martyrs are dead or alive, they're still martyrs. So you can't take that away. But my view is we should have brought him back. And I, uh, going through what happened in the room and so forth, 
Uh, I don't know whether it was a missed opportunity. Easy for me to say, sitting in a nice, comfortable armchair on a nice night in New York. But I honestly believe that the emphasis should have been on bring this guy back alive. We need to talk to him. And I think we would be very much further ahead with what's going in the mind of these people and how badly we've underestimated some of the things they are doing. Uh, ISIL has been there to see. There was a guy named Zarqawi, uh, you, some of you will remember, who ran the Iran, the Iraq uh, version of the war. He wasn't, he wasn't a very good fighter or anything, but he was inspirational. And he got people going over there, uh, and it, it's great we got him. Uh, and we got him by polishing up operational capabilities that we have developed over a period of time. One thing that people don't get, when I say unpreparedness or underpreparedness, I'm not being critical. I'm simply saying we've never fought a con an unconventional asymmetric war like this before. This is new for us. This is not World War II. Uh, you, you send out an Aegis destroyer, it's a target. What, what, you match up a rubber ducky and an Aegis destroyer. You think, what, what could possibly go wrong here? Well, we uh, lost a, a bunch of our uh, sailors. sailors and seamen. We damn near lost a ship. And they lost two people. Okay, you've got to think differently when you're doing this kind of warfare. And uh, my disagreement with President Obama is that making his policies to do this, he has come up with the wrong vision of how you deal with radical ideologues. Uh, I think you have to show force and strength. He feels uh, differently that we need to disengage, and if we go away, they'll be happy and make peace. Uh, I don't believe that for a minute. And, and I don't think most other people who have dealt with these people feel that way either. We are not going to hug these people to death. They are not going away. They are here for the long term. They've been around since 640, by my calculation. And they're going to continue to be. They have got something they're trying to do. And they, their biggest selling point is that they have the only guaranteed path to paradise. And that's martyrdom. That's the only guaranteed. You may get there a different way, if you please, a number of ways. But when you go into that particular uh, aspect of the radical fanaticism, it's not negotiable. You can't deal with people like that with a logical point of view. They understand strength. We're not using strength. We're using logic. And we're getting our stuff handed to us as a result. And, and, and that's my, my problem with the Obama administration. This idea of closing down Guantanamo. Gosh, we're going to close Guantanamo and bring all our troops back and everything is going to be great in the Mideast. No, it's not. The next, wherever we put KSM, and we're not going to let them go, that will be the next Guantanamo, of course. We've got to have a place to put these people. Actually, Guantanamo is a terrific spot. I've been there a number of times for Cuban refugees, Haitian refugees, uh, war prisoners, combat prisoners. Yeah, I, I've been. It, frankly, if I were Donald Trump, I'd make an offer. He'd make a great resort area. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fabulous real estate. But the, we need uh, a place like that. We can bring people there. They don't have to get due process. The American people are are managing them, so there's not going to be anything hideous going on. And there's plenty of oversight and media and all this other stuff happening. So I'm not concerned about that. But we need Guantanamo. We need a place like Guantanamo, unless we're planning to kill all the radical fundamentalist combatants. They, you notice they've grown. They're now in 20 countries. Wow, they, they weren't that many countries before. They're out there with affiliates everywhere, with more and more people. You hear every single person giving testimony these days in front of the Senate Armed Services, House Armed Services, name your committee. They're all saying, there's more of them, they're more serious, they're getting more brutal, we are having more trouble. Every time we pour more troops out, there's more, we've got to send more troops. That's what the military and the people who are dealing with this are saying, and the White House is saying, well, not so fast, because we, we you know, made promises that we, we weren't going to do it that way. We're going to do it the other way. We're going to get out of there because we've incited all this by being us overseas. Message for the president. Message for the president. The world is global. America's in it. And America's not coming back inside its own borders. We have too much business, too much tourists, too much everything going on out there. So, Mr. President, you got to understand, we have got to be out there able to discipline people who want to hurt us. And that really is the, the, just the, the nubbit of the problem. That is not our policy, and that's what needs to be our policy, says me, retired, in a comfortable armchair.